reality warps and sanity unravels as we dive into the abyss of a troubled mind. Steal yourself for a journey into insanity where appearances deceive and the boundaries between reality and illusion fade. Get ready for Twisted Tuesdays. Frozen in the Fletcher's doorway, Betty's heart pounded frantically as her eyes took in the macabre scene before her. The once pristine foyer, a testament to suburban perfection, had been transformed into a grotesque tableau of violence and death. At the center lay George Fletcher, his lifeless body sprawled across the polished hardwood floor, a dark pool of crimson slowly spreading beneath him. The air hung thick with the coppery scent of blood, mingled with the sickly sweet aroma of Evelyn's signature perfume, a cloying mix that churned Betty's stomach with revulsion. She could feel the weight of Evelyn's gaze upon her, those icy blue eyes boring into her soul with an intensity that sent shivers racing down her spine. Beside her, Doris stood motionless, her face a mask of shock and horror, her green eyes wide with disbelief. Betty's mind raced, her thoughts tumbling over one another in a dizzying spiral as she struggled to process the horrific scene before her. How had the quiet, unassuming lives of her suburban neighbors been shattered so violently, so irrevocably? The answers seemed to hover just beyond her grasp, taunting her with their elusiveness. What have you done? The words tore from Betty's throat, raw and accusatory, hanging in the suffocating stillness of the room. Her voice sounded foreign to her own ears, a hoarse whisper that barely rose above the thundering of her own heartbeat. Evelyn appraised Betty with a cool gaze, her lips curving into a faint, disquieting smile. My dear Betty, she murmured, her voice a silken purr that sent a shiver of unease down Betty's spine. I'm afraid you've stumbled into something far beyond your understanding. The implication of Evelyn's words sent Betty's mind reeling as a sickening realization dawned upon her. The Garden Circle, the secret society that had long been the subject of whispered rumors and speculation, was not the benevolent organization it appeared to be. Beneath its veneer of charitable works and social gatherings lurked something far darker, far more sinister. Doris let out a choked sob, her hands trembling as she pressed them to her mouth. I didn't... I never meant for this to happen. She whispered, her voice cracking with emotion. Evelyn, please, you have to believe me. Evelyn's gaze flicked to Doris, her expression inscrutable. Of course, my dear. She murmured, her tone soothing, almost maternal. We all make mistakes. The important thing is how we choose to move forward. Betty watched the exchange between the two women, a growing sense of unease coiling in the pit of her stomach. There was something off about Evelyn's demeanor, a calculated coldness that belied her words of comfort. It was as if she were playing a game, manipulating the situation to her own ends. A sudden banging at the door shattered the tense silence, causing Betty to nearly jump out of her skin. She whirled around, her heart leaping into her throat as she saw the flashing lights of police cars through the window. The cavalry had arrived, but Betty couldn't shake the feeling that they were walking into a trap. Evelyn moved with fluid grace, her movements almost unnaturally smooth as she glided towards the door. Let me handle this, she murmured, her voice low and authoritative. We wouldn't want any misunderstandings now, would we? Betty watched helplessly as Evelyn opened the door, greeting the officers with a somber expression that barely concealed the glint of satisfaction in her eyes. She could hear the murmur of voices, the tense exchange of questions and answers, but her mind was too numb to process the words. As the officers entered the house, their faces grim and alert, Betty felt a rising tide of panic threatening to engulf her. She knew that she should speak up, should tell them everything she had seen and heard, but the words stuck in her throat, trapped behind a wall of fear and uncertainty. 
Evelyn was watching her, those piercing blue eyes seeming to see straight into her soul. Betty, dear, she said, her voice sickly sweet. Why don't you come with me? We have so much to discuss. Betty hesitated, her instincts screaming at her to run, to get as far away from this nightmare as possible. But something in Evelyn's gaze held her transfixed, a hypnotic pull that she couldn't seem to resist. As she took a step forward, her body moving as if of its own accord, Betty couldn't shake the feeling that she was walking into the lion's den. The garden circle had shown its true colors, and she was now caught in the middle of a web of secrets and lies that threatened to consume her whole. The police officers moved past her, their voices a distant buzz as they began to secure the scene. Betty's gaze locked with Doris's, a silent plea for help, for understanding. But Doris's eyes were glazed with shock, her face a mask of numb disbelief. As Evelyn led her away, her hand a vice-like grip on Betty's arm, Betty couldn't help but wonder if she had just sealed her own fate. The garden circle had claimed another victim, and she was now at the mercy of forces far beyond her control. Amidst the chaos, Evelyn glided ahead, her movements fluid and graceful, a stark contrast. Greeting the officers with a somber nod, she spoke in a low, measured tone. Officers, thank you for your swift response. This is a tragic day for our community. Betty watched, her throat tight with unspoken accusations, as Evelyn effortlessly donned the mask of the grieving friend and concerned neighbor. It was a masterful performance, one that left no room for doubt or suspicion. But Betty knew the truth. She had witnessed the cold calculation in Evelyn's eyes and the cruel twist of her lips as she surveyed George's lifeless body. Ms. Monroe? A gruff voice startled Betty from her thoughts, and she turned to see a police officer regarding her with a wary expression. We'd like to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Betty nodded, her mouth suddenly dry, her palms slick with sweat. She followed the officer into the house, her heart pounding in her ears as she stepped over the threshold. The once familiar space felt alien, the air thick with the cloying scent of death and the sharp tang of blood. In the living room, Doris sat hunched on the sofa, her face buried in her hands, her shoulders shaking with silent sobs. Betty's heart ached for her neighbor, for the woman she had once considered a friend. But as she drew closer, she couldn't help but notice the way Doris's eyes darted towards Evelyn, the way her sobs seemed to hitch and stutter, as if on cue. Ms. Monroe, can you tell us what happened here tonight? The officer's voice was sharp, his gaze penetrating as he fixed Betty with a steely look. With a hard swallow, Betty's mind raced as she tried to find the right words. She knew that she had to choose her next moves carefully, that the wrong word, the wrong inflection, could seal her fate. But as she opened her mouth to speak, Evelyn's voice cut through the room like a knife. Officer, if I may? Evelyn's tone was honeyed, dripping with false concern. I'm afraid Betty has been under a great deal of stress lately. She's been fixated on our little social club, convinced that there's something sinister going on behind closed doors. Betty's blood ran cold as she watched Evelyn spin her web of lies, her words smooth and convincing, her expression a mask of sympathetic concern. She could feel the officer's gaze shifting, the doubt creeping into his eyes as he turned back to her. Is this true, Ms. Monroe? His voice was harsh, accusatory. Have you been harassing Mrs. Hart and her friends? No, that's not... Betty's voice trailed off, her words sounding weak and unconvincing even to her own ears. She could feel the noose tightening around her neck, the walls closing in as Evelyn's deception took hold. Perhaps it would be best if we continued this conversation down at the station. Evelyn suggested, her voice soft and reasonable. Betty is clearly distraught, and I wouldn't want her to say anything she might regret later. The officer nodded, his jaw tight as he reached for his handcuffs. Ms. Monroe, I'm going to have to ask you to come with me. 
Betty felt a surge of panic, her heart pounding in her chest as she stumbled backward, her eyes wide with fear. No, wait, you don't understand. Evelyn is lying. She's the one behind all of this. But even as the words left her mouth, Betty knew it was too late. The officer's grip was firm on her arm, his expression grim as he led her towards the door. She could hear Evelyn's voice, soft and soothing, as she murmured reassurances to Doris, promising that everything would be all right. As Betty was led out of the house, her wrists bound in cold metal, she couldn't shake the feeling that she had just walked into a carefully laid trap. Evelyn's manipulations had been flawless, her lies so convincing that even Betty had begun to doubt her own sanity. But as the police car pulled away from the curb, the flashing lights casting eerie shadows across the manicured lawns, Betty knew that she couldn't give up. The truth was out there, buried beneath layers of deceit and manipulation, and she would stop at nothing to uncover it. Even if it meant risking everything she had ever known, even if it meant facing the darkest corners of the human soul, Betty was determined to see this through to the end. The Garden Circle had chosen the wrong woman to cross, and she would make sure they paid for their sins, no matter the cost. As Betty sat at the cold metal table, the fluorescent lights cast a harsh, unforgiving glare, and the sterile white walls seemed to close in around her. Her hands trembled slightly as she clasped them in front of her, her eyes fixed on the two-way mirror that dominated one wall. She knew that she was being watched, that every move, every flicker of emotion, was being analyzed and dissected. With a sudden, jarring clang, the door swung open, causing Betty to flinch involuntarily. Two men entered the room, their faces grim and unreadable. The first was tall and broad-shouldered, with a square jaw and piercing blue eyes that seemed to bore straight through her. The second was shorter, wiry, with a sharp, angular face and a thin-lipped smile that held no warmth. Ms. Monroe. The taller man said, his voice a low, rumbling baritone. I'm Detective Sean O'Connor, and this is my partner, Detective Tom Grady. We have some questions for you about what happened at the Fletcher residence earlier this evening. Betty swallowed hard, her mouth suddenly dry as she met the detective's gaze. I've already told you everything I know. She said, her voice sounding small and thin in the oppressive silence of the room. The detectives exchanged a glance, their expressions hardening as they prepared to press their advantage. Betty could sense their skepticism, their belief that she was merely a delusional nuisance, a distraction from the real investigation. But she couldn't back down, couldn't allow Evelyn's lies to take root and spread like a toxic weed. Leaning forward, Detective Grady's sharp features twisted into a humorless smile. You see, Miss Monroe, we've been hearing some interesting things about you. Your neighbor, Mrs. Hart, seems to think that you've been harassing her and her friends, making wild accusations about some kind of secret society. As the full extent of Evelyn's manipulation dawned on her, Betty's heart sank. The woman had wasted no time in painting her as a delusional, obsessive fool, a threat to the very community she claimed to protect. She could feel the weight of the detective's scrutiny, the skepticism that radiated from their every pore. That's not true, she said, her voice trembling slightly. Evelyn is lying. She's the one behind all of this, the one pulling the strings. The garden circle is not what it seems. With an inscrutable expression, Detective O'Connor raised an eyebrow. And what exactly do you think the garden circle is, Ms. Monroe? Some kind of criminal organization? A cult, perhaps? Betty hesitated, the words sticking in her throat. She knew how it sounded, how crazy and paranoid she must appear. But she also knew that she couldn't back down, couldn't let Evelyn's lies go unchallenged. Taking a deep breath, Betty studied her resolve. She had come too far, risked too much, to allow her doubts and fears to consume her now. 
The truth was her only weapon against the insidious forces arrayed against her, and she would wield it with all the strength and conviction she could muster. I know it sounds insane, she said, her voice growing stronger as she met the detective's gaze. But I have proof. I've seen things, heard things that don't add up. The Garden Circle is involved in something dark, something sinister, and Evelyn Hart is at the center of it all. Detective Grady leaned back in his chair, his expression one of barely concealed contempt. And what exactly is this proof, Miss Monroe? Because from where I'm sitting, it looks like you're the one with the obsession, the one making wild accusations without a shred of evidence to back them up. Betty's mind raced as she tried to find the words to convince them, to make them see the truth behind Evelyn's carefully crafted facade. But even as she opened her mouth to speak, a sudden commotion outside the door made her pause. Raised voices, the sound of scuffling feet, and then the door burst open, revealing a disheveled and frightened-looking Doris Fletcher. The woman's eyes were wide and haunted, her face streaked with tears as she stumbled into the room. Please. She gasped, her voice raw and desperate. You have to listen to Betty. She's telling the truth. Evelyn is behind all of this, behind George's death. The Garden Circle is evil, and they'll stop at nothing to keep their secrets hidden. The detectives exchanged a startled glance, their skepticism momentarily forgotten in the face of Doris's unexpected appearance. Betty felt a surge of hope, a flicker of light in the darkness that had threatened to consume her. But even as Doris began to speak, her words tumbling out in a frantic, disjointed rush, Betty couldn't shake the feeling that they were all in terrible danger. The Garden Circle's reach was long, its influence deep and pervasive. And now that their secrets were beginning to unravel, there was no telling what lengths they would go to protect themselves. As the detectives listened, their expressions shifting from disbelief to dawning horror, Betty knew that the battle had only just begun. The truth was out there, waiting to be uncovered, but the road ahead would be treacherous and fraught with peril. She could only pray that they would all survive long enough to see justice served, to watch as the dark heart of the Garden Circle was finally exposed to the light of day. For in that moment, sitting in the cold, unforgiving glare of the interrogation room, Betty knew that the fate of Rosewood Falls, and perhaps the world itself, hung in the balance. In the cramped, dimly lit waiting area of the police station, Doris sat with her heart pounding a sickening rhythm in her chest. The plastic chair was hard and unyielding, while the air hung thick with the sour stench of stale coffee and sweat. Curious stares and the murmur of hushed conversations swirled around her like a dense fog, weighing heavily upon her. Her mind was a twisted maze of conflicting emotions, a tempest of fear and guilt and a desperate, clawing need for absolution. She had thought herself capable of escaping the consequences, of burying the truth beneath a mountain of lies and self-deception. But now, sitting in the stark fluorescent glare of the police station, she knew that the price of her silence would be higher than she could ever bear. The memory of George's lifeless body, his sightless eyes staring up at her from the polished hardwood floor, swam before her eyes, a grotesque vision that she could not seem to shake. She had loved him once, or thought she had, but that love had withered and died long ago, choked out by years of neglect and betrayal and the slow, inexorable decay of their marriage. And then there was Evelyn, the woman who had promised her salvation, who had offered her a path out of the suffocating confines of her suburban prison. Doris had been drawn to her like a moth to a flame, seduced by her easy charm and her whispered promises of power and control. But now, in the harsh light of reality, she could see the true nature of the bargain she had struck, the devil's pact that had sealed her fate. With trembling hands twisted in her lap, Doris's nails dug into the soft flesh of her palms. She could feel the weight of Evelyn's expectations, the unspoken demand for loyalty and obedience that hung in the air like a suffocating pall. 
She knew that she had a choice to make, a decision that would shape the course of her life and the lives of those around her. On one hand, she could stand by Evelyn, could cling to the lies and the deception that had become her only refuge. She could play the role of the grieving widow, the shocked and shattered victim of a terrible tragedy. It would be easy, so easy, to let the false narrative take hold, to let the world believe what it wanted to believe. But even as the thought crossed her mind, Doris felt a sudden, searing wave of revulsion. The idea of continuing to live a lie, of being complicit in the evil that Evelyn and the garden's circle represented, made her stomach churn and her heart clench with a sickening sense of dread. And then there was Betty, the woman who had stumbled into this nightmare, who had seen through the veil of secrecy and lies that surrounded the garden circle. Doris had been wary of her at first, had seen her as a threat to the fragile equilibrium of her carefully constructed world. But now, in the stark light of truth, she could see the courage and the determination that burned in Betty's eyes, the unwavering commitment to justice and righteousness that drove her forward. Doris closed her eyes, her breath coming in short, sharp gasps as she struggled to find the strength to do what she knew she must. It would not be easy to turn her back on everything she had ever known, to risk the wrath of Evelyn and the powerful forces that surrounded her. But she knew, with a sudden, blinding clarity, that it was the only path forward, the only way to salvage what remained of her shattered soul. With a trembling hand, Doris reached into her pocket and withdrew the small, ornate key that Evelyn had given her, the symbol of her loyalty and her obedience. She stared at it for a long moment, her eyes tracing the intricate patterns etched into the cool metal. And then, with a sudden, decisive motion, she snapped the key in two, the sharp crack echoing like a gunshot in the silence of the waiting room. Doris stood, her legs shaking beneath her as she made her way towards the interrogation room where Betty was being held. The eyes of the police officers followed her, their suspicion and distrust weighing heavily upon her. But she knew that she could not falter, could not let her resolve waver in the face of their scrutiny. She paused outside the door, her hand hovering over the handle as she took a deep, steadying breath. And then, with a sense of grim determination, she pushed the door open and stepped inside, ready to face whatever consequences her actions might bring. For in that moment, Doris knew that she had made her choice, had chosen the path of truth and justice over the easy comfort of lies and deception. And though the road ahead would be long and treacherous, she knew that she would not have to walk it alone. Thank you for joining us on another spine-chilling journey where nightmares come to life and horror knows no bounds. If you enjoyed this tale of terror, don't forget to leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're, and if you're brave enough, step through the door and subscribe to Sinister Serials, where every day brings a new flavor of fear, from Macabre Mondays to Thriller Thursdays. Mystery. And don't forget to check out our other terrifying tales waiting to be discovered in our library of horror. Until next time, keep the lights on, if you dare.